My dad, in November 1956, finally made the deal that we bought seven sections here. And uh, in December, the cows moved out here. I came with the cows and have been here ever since. And what's really great about this area is we do get the southwest wind and it bears off the ground and that being our native grass cures on the stem, it's an excellent place to raise cow calves managing it for a good 50 years and lately I've been trying to turn the management over to my boy Gerald. My role is mostly on the day-to-day -day decisions that are to be done. I work with the marketing and the cattle movement when we're in our rotational grazing process. Growing up here was a, an excellent opportunity for me. I enjoyed being outside and being able to work with my father. As I grew, I went to university to study agriculture to have a, an idea of how I could maybe come back with some information how to improve things here. It's my personal desire to make sure that the land is better than when I found it. It's also a goal of mine to keep trying to make it better. We do a lot of rotational grazing on some tame grass through the summers. We save our native grass for winter use. In the summer, we'll try and move our cows every two or three days just so that we can manage the grass, utilize some of the less desirable species due to pressure, but also have adequate rest periods so the grass has a chance to come back. Come winter, we do not haul out a lot of feed compared to other areas of the province. We like to have a few legumes. Slicer's milk fetch is a favorite of mine. In last year's, we've put the seed right in the salt, letting the cow pie plant up. The legume part of it puts nitrogen in the soil and helps the grass. We do manage for rough fescue on the northern slopes and on the south slopes here, Perry's oat grass is the one we try and manage for. Those are native grasses. In my opinion, the cow is what we harvest our grass with, and the grass harvests the sun. I think we're blessed right here with a few things. We are quite lucky because we do have good water and uh, we have a nice terrain. From the beginning, we did a lot of water development. We've built numerous dams. We are privileged to take advantage of flood irrigation with the landscape that we have. It allows us to flood our tame grass pastures with minimal costs. Our biggest cost is just labor. We don't have any pumping or electrical costs. Another thing with our operation, we are very fortunate. All year long, we have no water pumps or water heaters. It's all gravity fed and all of our troughs flow so we don't have to heat them. We also have a solar panel. We used to let the cows drink right out of the ditch, but we found they were kind of destroying our ditch bank. Another benefit we have with our solar waterer is when we rotational graze our old hay fields, we can pull water out of our irrigation ditches and so it allows us to rotate in smaller pastures. We do a lot of recycling. We take old mine tires to make into big water troughs. 30 years ago, I picked up two of those big rubber tires. I never realized what was coming after that. Since then, we've cut thousands or more and uh, we put in lots of them for the neighbors. But I think the main benefit of it is it's nice to see a well-developed spring that's good for 20, 30 years if it's done right. When we're cutting the tires for water troughs, we end up with a sidewall that is, in a sense, waste material. So we've decided to build a big wind fence out of these sidewalls. It provides protection for our calves in the wintertime. In our operation, we retain ownership right till the packing plant. It's an excellent opportunity to see how they grade at a, at a packing level. I am a firm believer if you've got good cattle, you should be able to make money all the way with them. And I think carcass quality is something we like to keep track of, we like to learn from it. We're trying to improve the quality of the cow. We find ourselves very active in the community. Over the years, we've been involved with various different landowner and stewardship groups. Uh, several years ago, our valley formed a stewardship group. It was the Linden Creek Conservation Group, and we did many projects with the neighbors. Cows and Fish has done a lot of work, mostly with riparian areas. The Alberta Conservation Association has worked with us, helping to provide some funding with electric fence and off-stream watering and rotational grazing supplies. Another thing we've been involved in 
off the ranch is the Waldron Grazing Co-op just west of us. My father and I have both been directors for several years. Um, Footfills Forage was instrumental in some of the grazing practices and ideas that we've been involved in as well. Sustainability means you can keep doing it and it's working and you're improving things and I, I think you got to do more than just be stable. You got to keep trying a few new things. We've been very blessed here too that things have worked out pretty nice. Nice place to raise a family and we've done very well that way. I feel it's important to leave our place in a better state than when I started. We have future generations coming and it's just important to have a, a place where they can call home that is in good shape that they can easily take over and maintain what we've started. <laughs>